So this is a little project I did about a year ago. It's a one and a half million to one gear ratio. I've always been fascinated by really high gear ratios. Uh, there's this museum exhibit that I saw quite a while ago that on one end, the motor is turning fairly quickly and all the way down at the other end of it, the last gear is cast into concrete. I just think it's an amazing demonstration of the fact that a gear ratio can absorb so much energy over time. And so that was the origin of this. It was a really quick project, took me maybe 30 minutes to design, and I maybe spent 30 minutes to an hour cutting it out on the laser cutter and assembling it. I didn't even bother to find an unbent drive shaft, which is the reason that it wobbled so much previously. But this time I decided to redo it, create a brand new one, an even bigger gear ratio, and I'm going to give you a little tutorial on how I made it happen. So this is Inkscape. If you're familiar with CorelDRAW or maybe Adobe Illustrator, those are just vector illustration programs. Inkscape is basically the same thing. It is open source and free, so you can download it and try this yourself. Obviously, it isn't as good as those other programs. It doesn't have all of the amazing features, but we can definitely make it work for this purpose. I'll just use the existing gear extension in Inkscape and create a gear, create a couple of them, create some spokes in the larger gear, duplicate it a bunch of times, and create a stand. And there you have it. We have basically everything that we need. Now I'll cut it out on a laser cutter. And blammo, we have a bunch of parts. You can see this time I'm going to be using some skateboard bearings for the fun of it. And otherwise, let's put it together and see what happens. Now before I show the final product, I wanted to show you how gear ratios work. In this case, I'm using a smaller gear of 15 teeth and a larger gear of 60. 60 divided by 15 is 4, so we have a 4 to 1 gear ratio. You stack that over and over and over and over and over again. To this point, you can see using this excellent website, GearGenerator.com, that after this number of gears with 15 and 60 uh, gear teeth respectively, we get to a 67 million to one gear ratio. Pretty cool. And so here we have it. I didn't bother to show the assembly on camera because honestly it would take way too long to get all of the little parts into place and I figured it would bore everyone. If my calculations are right, with an input speed of about 100 RPM, you would end up with the final gear turning once every year and a half, something like that. Someone can check my math and let me know in the comments if that's correct. Now one of the things a lot of people asked in the previous video is, can you turn it backwards? There are a couple of reasons why I cannot, as demonstrated here. In the original when I tried, it actually broke the gears. Unfortunately, the amount of torque that you would require in order to turn the entire thing in reverse would be insane. And obviously, because these gears are made out of wood, there really wouldn't be any purpose to it because all it's going to do is destroy them. But you can see here that going in the other direction, because of the gear reduction, we can put in an infinitesimal amount of energy to spin the first gear. And that energy is going to go all the way through the mechanism to the end. If you theoretically could spin the first gear super, 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 super fast, let's say 67 million RPM, then the last gear would go, you know, fairly quickly. But unfortunately, because we can't spin it that quickly, here's what we have. Just kind of a cool little demonstration of how gear ratios work. If you think this is interesting, if you'd like more information, let me know. Also, if you'd like me to try anything else with this basic concept, I'm more than happy to try to put together a little experiment and we can see how it goes.